Good evening and welcome to our midweek Bible class session. I would love to hear from anyone what kind of day have you had today? You can share. I think my day was went pretty well. My, my day was a good day as well, Brother Asni. Thanks for asking. Good. Anybody else? We'd love to hear a female voice. As to... um, a female? Uh oh. Brother no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy the work day has ended. <clears throat> Didn't suggest to me how well it went, but <laughs> at least you're happy. Okay, that's good. Sister Beverly, how was your day? Good evening, everyone. My day was very, very busy, but it was a good day. How was yours? Good. Good, good. Went well for me, I think, giving God thanks. All right. <clears throat> Brother G, I, I, I would hate to leave you out here. And what is you wanted to get in on the section that was for the ladies, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can represent Sister Monica. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Brother Smith, you just imagine how the day went. If I want to see. <laughs> I had an interesting day. <laughs> it's an interesting day. You know, it started with a disappointment, but it ended great. So I'm giving thanks that I'm here in a part of a Bible class. You know, amazing yeah. day. Great day. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, good. Sister Monica, you're back in town. You all right? Yes, I'm okay. I had, I had a very interesting day. You know? I said I had a very interesting day. Okay. I won't probe any further. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's get down to the business. I'm going to um, invite you to join me in singing a couple of songs. Then we'll have a word of prayer. And then we turn over to our master tutor um, to work his magic as he helps us to better understand God's will for our lives. So let's talk about love. A common love. For each other a common gift, for the Savior a common bond, holding us to the Lord, a common strength when we weary, a common hope. For tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's word. A common love for each other, a common gift for the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's word. And that's why I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep Falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Keeps falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over again. Over and over again, he keeps blessing me over and over and over and 
over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and mine. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. Before we have a word of prayer. When I sing, it's me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father or my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father or my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, not my brother or my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, not my brother or my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, oh, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not the elders or the deacons, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not the elders or the deacons, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of not my neighbors or strangers, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my neighbors or strangers, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. This time we will have word of prayer after which. Master Tutor Stephen Grenell will lead tonight's session. Let's bow as we go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we are so grateful to you that, you know, we need, all of us need this moment, this moment of prayer to come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We're so grateful that you have kept us through this day, don't matter what it was like, don't matter the ups and downs or the difficulties or the great time we had, we are at this point, at this moment, where we can look to you and just tell you thanks. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. May you purge us, may you truly transform us as we seek to live for you. Lord, I, I pray for you know, especially at this time, or older members, you know, that may be going through one ailment or another. May you truly, oh God, lift their spirit up. And I, I just remember this time, the juniors, you know, I, I pray, God, that you truly bless them. You, you keep them, you, you know, preserve them, you watch over them. I pray for Sister Marshall, and her family, I pray for Sister Rankin. You know, Father, I bring before you the Habs. I speak, oh God, at this time that you bless the Smiths. Father God, may you just be with our members that have been around for so long, have great experience. May they all use it to help others, you know, to bless others, to guide us, and help us to continue to walk in the straight in the straight and narrow part. Father, we, we pray for our young people. May you lift them up. May you truly bless them. May they realize that there's no better place 
than to remain in your kingdom. Father, we pray for Stephen this evening. May you truly bless him, bring back in a vivid way what he has studied so that he may really challenge us. And may we be good students. May we listen. And may we have a heart and a desire, an attitude to be like Jesus, to apply your words to our lives. Bless each one of us. Take us through the rest of this night as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Smith. Thank you very much, Brother Grenell. And good evening to everyone who has joined us thus far. Um, smallish in numbers, but you know what they say, quality over quantity. So really, really glad to be here for another Bible class this evening. We have missed a few. Tuesdays, the first Tuesday, we supported, um, I think it was Hope Bay. Was it Hope Bay? No, it was Spaulding's. Spaulding's had a seminar, um, a week long seminar on marriage, and we supported that the first Tuesday. And then we had our own seminar um, on heart diseases. And um, so that was where our second Tuesday went. So we have, for the past two weeks, we've only had class on Sundays, but we are back this Tuesday and we are excited to be here. Right, so let me get my slide up. Let me add this slide quickly before I do that, since I need to give a proper recap. Forgive the delay. There we go. Here. Full on the floor. All right. So, uh, before I share my screen, um, let me just remind you that Samuel has taken the lead for the first time since we have started um, giving points between Samuel and Esther. Um, so we're going to be continuing this evening and um, we've been capturing the visual aspect of, of the activity for the most part. And we're going to change now to the auditory aspect. So when we're moving from scripture to scriptures, rather than seeing an image and you telling me who it is, you're going to be hearing the audio of a song. And um, I'm going to, for each song, I'm going to need at least two hands. The first person who raises their hand will have the opportunity to tell me either the person who is singing or the name of the song. And then the second person who has their hands raised will have to answer the one that the first person did not provide an answer to. Um, if both persons are from the same team, then the team will get two points and the team will be responsible for reading. If separate, if both teams provide an answer and it's only one verse, then the team that provided the first answer will read. And if it's more than one reader for that verse, then both individuals will read. If there are more than two, then I will require hands from the rest of the team members. All right, that sounds clear enough. All right, let me give, let me give away some points before we even get into things. Um, anybody can tell me which book and chapter we have been looking at for the past few weeks the past few weeks we've been looking at the part okay go ahead sister paula isaiah 53 right, that is right so esther is on the board before you big up with screen big up yourself sister paula all right so we've been looking at isaiah 53 why have we been looking here it's because we have been 
trying to focus on transformation and we identified after recognizing our being as lacking, as human beings we are lacking in, in our ability to, to do what God would want us to do by nature. Hence why we keep sinning, hence why we keep falling short. And for us to transform, or for us to truly access the power of transformation, we have to access Jesus. And to properly access Jesus, we need to understand Jesus. And that is what we have been doing for the past few weeks. We looked at John chapter 1 to get an understanding of Jesus as the word and the light. And we've been looking at Isaiah 53 to see what we can learn from, from um, what Jesus, what was prophesied of Jesus and how things manifested in Jesus' life as proven through other scriptures. So um, we have looked, we have gone through from verse one through to verse nine. We haven't finished verse nine, but that's what we've been looking at. So um, I'm just going to read through the scriptures um, so that we can get an idea of where we have built up to, and then we'll get right into things. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up, the scriptures in brackets are the scriptures that we looked at that correlated these particular um, scriptures to Jesus Christ. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced. Come off of my screen. Give me one second. I need to move this so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay, there we go. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. So this is where we are currently at, verse 9. And we will be concluding verse 9 and hopefully concluding verse 10 as well at the end of today's class. So let me just give you a reminder of the passages that we have looked at thus far for verse 9. Um, so we looked at... Matthew chapter 27, 57 through to 61, which highlighted where Jesus was placed in the tomb. We looked at Deuteronomy 21 that spoke to the Jewish um, explanation as to why individuals were not left on a cross. And hence, when we moved to John 19, it lended some context as to why the Jewish leaders um, asked Pilate to have the prisoners removed, even though usually due to Roman custom, they would be on the cross for a few days. All right, uh, hold on. So we, are, so we are now looking at our first scripture that since the last class on Sunday. As I said, you're going to hear the song. If you know the song, you raise your hand. 
Remember, it's the first two people, the person who raised their hand first, will have the opportunity to say whether they want to tell you what the name of the singer is or the name of the song. If you say both, then I will give one point automatically to the opposing team because you're only allowed to say one. All right? You have been warned. Let's get to this now. Hold on, you guys can hear? Okay, I see Marlon hand go up. So I presume Marlon can hear? Yes. You can you hear Marlon? Yes, I can. Okay, all right, go ahead, Marlon. What are you giving me? The name of the person or the song? I am giving this song. All right, go ahead, sir. Um, the song is entitled um, <laughs> Still in Love <laughs> or I'm Still in Love. What is it? Still in Love or I'm Still in Love. All right, all right. We'll accept that. We'll accept that. Um, anybody want to tell, give us the artist? Or you want to hear more of the song? I do not see any hands, so let me go on. All right, go ahead, Ted and Tribe. Sean Paul. John Paul? Sean. Pardon? No, Sean Paul. Sean Paul? <laughs> He's got that version. He's got that version, sir. Me and Sean. You want to run me out of church. Anyway, let me continue. Go ahead, Brother Smith. Alton Ellis. Alton Ellis is correct. All right, so two points there for Samuel. So, um, Marlon, you gave me the first answer so you can read for me, please. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. All right. Thank you very much, Brother Marlon. As I had said on Sunday, 1 Peter chapter 2, especially the ver probably from verse 21 up, quotes several of the verses from Isaiah 53. And this is one from verse 9, which we're looking at, where it said he committed no sin and no deceit was in his mouth. All right. We'll move into our next song. See if I can play it in the middle so that people don't mix up who the artist is. Oh, no, you know this one, let me just start it. All right, go ahead, Feyan. Feyan. All right, the Feyan, Feyan gives us the name of the artist. And Marlon, your hand is up next. Go ahead with the song title. Oh, Marlon had his gun. No, no. Uh, um, oh. so I, uh, um, I'm going to say heart goes on. All right, that, that, that little too, too off. Mr. Paula, you want to go ahead? My heart will go on. My heart will go on. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Paula. But since the ladies have taken that one, you will be responsible for reading for me. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we'll reach the next one. All right. So, um, Feyan, Cynthia first, read verse 10 for me, please. Just the top part. Yes, it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. All right. Thank you very much. Fan. So um this this passage, if you read it from, from certain translations, gives a very um interesting um read. So a lot of people will probably know this passage as saying, but it pleased the Lord to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And um it's a part of the word that is used here for will can give that kind of a rendition. So the word means to incline to. So where you say, yes, it was the Lord's will. It means to incline to, give the implication to bend. And figuratively, it means to be pleased with or to desire. 
to be pleased with or to be desire to desire and this word is used very consistently to align itself with what god wills to be so whilst it can give the idea of desiring in the sense of having a desire and something that pleases you it also and more often is used to give the idea of this is what i want to happen so this is my desire is for this to come into existence and that's the implication here that that was god's desire what god wanted was for jesus to go through this particular circumstance so it's not the passage is not saying that jesus got um some form of of ha pleasure or happiness from jesus's suffering directly what it is essentially saying is that god's desire because he wanted us to be free was for jesus to go through this And the word crush here, it means to crumble. Transitively, meaning when it is used on an object. So when something is crushed, it means to bruise. And the extension of this bruise here goes on to beat to pieces. So don't think of the, the slight bruise, the small bruise. Think of something getting beaten, the skin, for example, getting beaten until it is torn to pieces. That is the kind of crush here that is being highlighted. The word suffer here, it means to be rubbed or worn. And by figuratively, it means to be sick or weak. And the idea of being sick or weak here is think of your health being rubbed away. Somebody taking sandpaper essentially to your health to the point where you get sick or weak. That's the imagery here. So alongside the beating to pieces with the bruising, the weakness or sickness here comes from being rubbed away. So Jesus being caused to suffer here is not something that happened instantaneously. So it wasn't just one suffering. It was suffering over time that led to him being weak and sick, that kind of a rub, rubbing away of his, his health. And then he says, and though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, so the word make here means to put, which can mean to place, to set, to anoint, appoint, sorry. So essentially God appointed Jesus' life as an offering for sin. He decided that this was going to be an offering for sin. And the, the word offering for sin is one word. It can mean a fault or it can also mean a sin offering. And a sin offering here, um, as used in the Old Testament, spoke to the specific sheep or goat or whatever oxen, whatever animal was set aside for the specific offering for sin would be labeled as a sin offering. And God is, it is Isaiah saying here that that is what God made Jesus' life. He's made Jesus' life a sin offering. This is what it is for, to be offered for sin. And what Isaiah is saying that even though God it was in God's will for Jesus to go through all this. Even though God made Jesus' life an offering for sin, in spite of all this, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. The word offspring here literally means seed. And figuratively, it can be in reference to a fruit because fruits provide seed. It can be a plant the plant that grows from a seed, or it can mean child, where, you know, when people use the word seed, it gives the idea of the offspring of an individual. The word prolong means to draw out or lengthen, to cause something to be long. So the offspring, the seed, whatever seed it is referring to, will be prolonged. The days will, of those seeds will be prolonged. And once again, the will here of God will be will prosper in Jesus' hand or whoever is being prophesied hand. And the word prosper here means to push forward, to advance, to prosper, or to succeed. And the word hand here refers to an open one, indicating power, means, or direction. And the same imagery with the outstretched hand. So in verse 1 of Isaiah 53, it says that um, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord outstretched. The same imagery as the open hand, indicating power, indicating means, indicating direction. And essentially what this verse is saying, that in spite of Jesus' life coming to an end in the physical sense, 
what God wanted to achieve was fulfilled through this particular sacrifice. So it may appear to those who saw Jesus dying that this is the end of Jesus. But in truth, all of that took place so that the latter part of the verse could take place, that his seed could come into existence, that his days could be prolonged, and that the will of the Lord, which is the most important part, would prosper in his hand. And we're going to see some verses that speak to what this will is, speak to the crushing and suffering of Jesus, and also the prolonging of his days, and exactly who this seed is in reference to. All right, so um, Brother Smith, I see your hand. Or it was left up from before you. You have a comment or? Okay, I see it go down, so I'm going to assume. No? Mistake, mistake, mistake. Okay, okay, all right. All right, let's go. Um, church building. Acapella, the acapella group. Okay, okay, that is wrong. So let's lower that hand. Fayan, go ahead. Oh my goodness. Um, oh my goodness, is that the name of the song that they're giving me? No, no, no. no. Why can't I remember Heidi Clue's ex husband? Um, 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 Three seconds remaining. Uh, all right, pass. I can't remember. Right. Um, go ahead, Marlon. Um, what has already been taken? Nothing. So you have both options. I'd like to go both, please. No, you cannot go. No, both. don't tell me. Oh, tell only one. Right. So I'll give. I'll give the the name of the artist. Go ahead, sir. His no, name is Seal. All right, Seal is correct. So one point for Samuel. Ten and Tribe. You're going to give us the name of the song. It's a kiss, kiss from a rose. Kiss from a rose is correct, Mister Sandra. So um. So Samuel and Esther will be sharing the reading, providing there is more than one verse. No, we skip that. Okay, just one verse. So, Brother Marlon, you can go ahead again. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was, an, was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. All right, thank you. Well read, Marlon. So exact this particular verse in Acts here, which is Peter speaking to the masses, is highlighting two particular parts of verse 10. One, he highlights that Jesus being sacrificed, Jesus um, dying on the cross was due to God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. So where it says that it was God's will for all of this to happen, here Peter is confirming that. And then also he's confirming the fact that Jesus was bruised, that Jesus um, actually died as a result of what, was under, what he underwent. So um, well read there. Moving on. And thank you, group two, for that particular passage. Go ahead, Sister Paula. TLC. All right, so Sister Paula gave me the name that is correct. Go ahead, Britannia. Don't, don't go chasing waterfalls. I'm a lenient no. this evening. And since I showed lenient to Marlon, I'll show lenient to here as well. It's actually waterfall. Yeah, that's waterfall. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I showed lenient initially, so I have to, to be fair across the board. So um, Esther taking both points there. Um, so Sister Paula, you are white. Britannia, you are yellow. Wow, it's only about. Uh, sad for me, Sister Paula. 
Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I sh shall lose none of those who he, he has given me, but raise up, raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. All right. Thank you very much, Sister Paula. Thank you very much, Britannia. So here we see a manifestation of the fact that Jesus was, that Jesus was, um, it was in God's will for Jesus to give up his life and also a revelation that Jesus knew this will. So this wasn't a behind the scenes will that God had in mind and Jesus was just out there in ignorance. Jesus knew that what God willed was for him to give up his life. And we see Jesus making reference to the latter part of this verse about what will would prosper through his hand when he speaks about those who would be raised up on the last day. And that is what seed would be prospering it's not offspring in the sense of children that jesus gave birth to but rather those who jesus would raise up as a result of them following him and that eternal life is the fact that they would they would live forever all right let us <laughs> correct say, how do i sabotage the internet uh, let's move on Let's see if you can raise your hand first, sir. Hold on, what, what, what is this? Go ahead, ten and tribe. It's Ting, um, Brian Adams. There are a lot of artists. They gave me two of the three, so I'll accept that. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody know the name of the song? Again, a little bit more. I swear I Go ahead, Tezin. I'm going to know Tezin born another time. Yeah? I forgot the name what I was trying to remember. All right, next time we raise your hand when you, when you remember. All right. All right. The answer is all for love. All for love. David, since you, you got one point, you will read. Um, Next person raise their hand will have the opportunity to read alongside David. All right. Tezain. So Tezain, you start us off with white. David, you go with green. Go ahead, Tezain. Oh, on is there. We please. Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all of the chief friends and it. The elders said to them, to them, when they hear this, they raise their voice together in prayer to the God. Sovereign Lord. They said. You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, O Father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel and the city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. 
they did what your sorry they did what your power and will had said before ha hand should happen all right thank you very much well read Devin. well read david so yes um here we have another declaration from um the disciples in acts and they're praying to god after having gotten bad news from peter and john about um the persecution essentially that they were told not to preach Jesus's name. And within this particular prayer, they are highlighting the fact that this attempt to, to stop um, the, the word of God, um, Jesus being preached, is, is, um, is one in vain. Because everything that has happened, all of the things that happened to Jesus, all of the things that the high priest and the elders thought that they were in control of were things that God had already willed to happen. So once again, we see reinforcement of um, verse 10, where it says that it was God's will that these things would happen to Jesus. It is even going further to say that the power that these individuals believed that they had over Jesus was only as a result of God having will that jesus go through this and jesus being subjective to god subjected sorry to god's will if they did not want this to happen no one could force it upon the son of god all right let us move on Go ahead, um, David, Ten and Tribe. I don't know if it's David. All right. So, McMahon and Sandra's put it. Um, Synod O'Connor. Nothing compares to you. All right. That is correct. All right. So um, I guess you shall split the reading as well. Oh, no. It's just one reader. Anyway, David, I'm tired of hear from you. So, Sandra, can you read for me, please? You know, my glasses, you know. <laughs> right, go ahead, go ahead, David. I retract my initial statement. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up <laughs> prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. All right, thank you very much, um, David. So here we see where Jesus. This speaks to Jesus' suffering. And we know, especially in the garden, um, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to God, who was the one who could save him. And God heard him because of his reverent submission, but that did not mean that he did not go through it. And in verse 8, it says that even though he was God's son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Um, very difficult experience for Jesus, and I'm sure very difficult experience for God as well, recognizing Jesus' reverent submission, despite um, suffering to the extent where he would offer up prayers and petitions. A lot of the times we speak to Jesus' willingness to die, and we almost paint this fairy tale willingness that Jesus skipped down the road to the cross. With, with open arms and a big smile on his face. And it is, it, is a manif it is proof that Jesus was human. In spite of his complete obedience to God, he had to battle with the human part of him that yearns for survival, that yearns to avoid pain, to avoid suffering. He had to deal with the psychological distress that he was going through, knowing exactly what would happen to him and know how long it would take place and know all the pain that would be presented to him. Jesus was not exempt from that. Jesus did not have that or did not ask God to take that away from him after God reinforced that this was something that he had to go through. That did not make it any easier. 
And when we remember, especially when we're looking at the Lord's Supper, when we remember what Jesus went through, let us recall that Jesus was hoping that there was any other way. Even though he knew there was no other, he still would ask. That is the extent of the desperation. You still asked if there's any way that he didn't have to go through this. And this, the axis of our transformation did not come willy-nilly. It was as a result of Jesus going through great suffering. We need to truly appreciate that and try to use that as the conviction for our um, change in behavior. All right, let's move on. Hold on, why must you let me repeat the same thing? Forward, my girl, backward. All right, skip this one. We're just going to do first uh, raise hand. So when I skip the, the slide, the first hand raise or the order of the hands you raise will determine the readers. Forgive me. It seems that I have recopied the same song. So we need two readers, the so two hands, and the point, okay. All right, <laughs> Samuel. Well, I don't know if. The tenant tribe is for Samuel, but Marlon, you'll be reading white, and whoever it is from tenant tribe, you'll be reading yellow. Um, go ahead, Marlon. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. All right. Thank you very much, Marlon. Thank you very much, Brother David. Um, this is, I think, probably the most vulnerable we see Jesus um, in Scripture. And it, it really, when you read this particular passage, it really tells you the type of distress that Jesus was in. So Jesus was with his disciples. Jesus knew the moment um, of his death was upon him. And Knowing that, knowing exactly what he had to go through, naturally his human response was one of being overwhelmed. So he said it was in verse 37, it says he was sorrowful and troubled. He took what we could call his best friends, his besties, Peter and James and John, and he took them even further away from the rest of the disciples. And he went to pray. He then separated himself. So he told them that his soul was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. I don't know if anyone within the chat has ever felt or been at that state. I know I never have felt overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, but I can imagine that to be in a scenario like that must be distressing. I think I have had periods of time when I feel like I'm overwhelmed with stress, or when I'm overwhelmed with anxiety, but I can't even compare to what it must be like to be overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And if anyone does know what that feels like, then they can empathize with where Jesus was at that particular time. So Jesus now having bared this to his disciples. And as, we as I said, when we read through scripture, you don't get this kind of emotional um, revelation from Jesus. So I presume this is whether if it wasn't written, then there may have been other times. But from what we can see, this is the most vulnerable Jesus has expressed himself to be to his disciples. So after letting them know, boy, I may struggle 
he makes what one would seem to be a very fair request in that state to stay here and keep watch with me. He goes a little further, I presume, so that they can hear what he's saying or to get that kind of an intimate scenario with God. And his request is that if it is possible, if there's any way, take this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. As I said, this is once again a revelation of the, the desperation that Jesus had because he knew that this was the only way things could end up. There was no other person who could take the cup. He had to go through it. But so damning was what he had to go through that he still had to ask. You ever have um, an interaction where you know that the answer is no? You know that the answer is no, but because you want it so bad, you say, boy, let me ask all the same. You know you're not getting a yes, but you say, you, you, you have to ask all the same because so great is the desire for the thing that you're asking for that you have to get the no confirmed. Imagine that being the case for Jesus, knowing that the answer is going to be no, you are so desperate to avoid this that you still ask. Yet being Jesus, he concedes his desire to the desire of God. So you bear your soul, you come to a realization, boy, that this is the road that you have to walk down. And you walk back to get some consolation from your friends. And what happened? Fast asleep. Jesus asked, you couldn't, one hour you couldn't stay awake. And then he goes away a second time. And his prayer is slightly different this time. He says, so in the first time he says, if possible, may this cup be taken away. Then he says, if it is not possible for the cup to be taken away unless I drink it, then so be it. It's almost a rhetorical statement because he knows that that is the case. Him don't even bother ask for the cup to be taken away. It's almost like him just saying, boy, if this is what it is, this is what it is. It's a, it's a prayer of resignation. He, he realized that, boy, this is the case, but him still, he still is struggling with it, so he needs to talk to his father about it. And he goes back to the disciples, and the disciples are sleeping again. Not because they are wicked, not because that them don't care about Jesus, but their eyes are heavy. But can you imagine that? Imagine you are going through the roughest emotional period in your life and you, you, have your, you, you bring your friends with you and you show your vulnerability and you express your vulnerability and you tell them, just, just stay up with me now and then drop asleep one time. And you say, boy, really? And more than likely, them good say, ah, ah, I'm going to drop asleep again. Sorry, sorry. And then you go back to them and then drop asleep again. And then you leave them. And what does Jesus do? He prays the same thing the third time, even though he knows the answers to these prayers. That is the kind of distress that Jesus was going through. All right. Um, I see David. Let me see what the no problem is. Let me read it. Could it be that after seeing the weakness of his disciples, Jesus resigned himself to the course he had to take? So the nature of his prayer changed? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very insightful possibility, David. Naturally, I cannot say yes because I wasn't there at the time, but that would make sense. That would make sense. Um, it, it, it's not... If, if when he returns and he sees that in spite of their goodwill, they can't even support him in a situation like that. It could have been that he realized that, boy, for these men's sake, I have to walk down this road. So if um, it, it, it could very well be that, David. So good, good, good statement. But yes, all of this that we're looking at here is Jesus coming to grips with the will of God. And as, as we looked at in verse 10, it says that it was God's will to bruise him and for him to suffer. And this is a part of the suffering 
accepting that you are taking on this role in and of itself is suffering. It's not just the physical abuse, the emotional and mental abuse, knowing that this is what the, your entire life is building up towards is rough. And Jesus did this for us. Jesus did this so we, like David said, the weakness that we have could, could give birth to something greater. And when we finish, when we reach verse 11 and 12, we're going to see what it is that Jesus hoped to have manifested with his sacrifice. And it is, when we, we speak about transformation, a lot of the times when we use the word, we look at the benefits that come from being something bigger, being something better. But when we look at transformation, re Christ, a big part of it is recognizing what was needed to give birth to this transformation. It is a different level of ungratefulness, of ingratitude. If we see what Jesus did so that we have a chance at a new life, and we say, you know what, eh, we're not really inclined to that. Oh, well, that's nice to hear, but I'll pass. Or I'll give the bare minimum in my attempt to do what God wants me to do. This is, Jesus had the opportunity to say, you know what, make them take on their own responsibility, since I never did anything. But he, in spite of that suffering, took on that burden. And now we have this new opportunity. Let us grasp it with two hands and feet, if possible. I'm church building. I see your hand raised. Um, yes. Um, just thinking that isn't this a, a lesson for us in terms of when we're a stressful moment, we should sometimes, I don't know if all the time, seek help from those who can pray for us, pray with us, and support us. If Jesus Christ was the son of God, he knows everything there is to know about everything. And he could reach out to his disciples um, that don't have, if we wear the spiritual strength he has. Shouldn't we consider something like that? I don't know. What do you think? No, man, that's, a, that's an excellent point, Brother Grenell. That's an excellent point. If, as you said, if Jesus, in his point of being overwhelmed, called for his disciples, um, sought, revealed to them what he was going to, because he could have just said, you know, okay, come, come with me, I'm going to pray. Stay here and keep watch. He could have just said that and then gone and revealed his vulnerability to his father. But he let them know exactly what it is that he was going through. And even though they fell asleep, and this is probably another point that we need to make, um, he kept returning to them. Um, and I presume that even though he may not have been particularly pleased with the fact that they fell asleep, I think that he, he understood that they were trying. Um, as you see in verse 43, it says, again, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. And I don't think that was lost on Jesus. So as much as he wanted their support, he recognized that them falling asleep wasn't so much because they didn't want to support him, but because they were tired. And I think that that is a part of us being vulnerable, realizing that, especially when it is not because of a lack of care or a deliberate lack of concern, but rather because their desire or ability to help was lacking, we shouldn't use that as an excuse to say, oh, well, they couldn't help me that time, they, or they never gave me the kind of help that I wanted at that particular time. So I'm not going to seek them for help at any particular time. I'm sure Jesus appreciated the fact that they, they still came and that they were still there. As much as he would have preferred them being awake, they were there. And sometimes that is the mentality that we need to have when we're seeking assistance. Um, they, the suicide rate for men is far greater than it is for women. And a lot of psychologists have um, recognized one of those factors is that men seem to keep their emotions bottled up inside. 
whereas women are usually more inclined to share. We have, this is a lesson from Jesus here. Who was a more manly man than Jesus? This is the son of God. Man was a carpenter, you know, if you use him hand. It says that he grew in stature with God and all men. He could heal. He knew scripture back and forth. Yet in his more emotional distress, he revealed his state to his friends and he asked them to stay and watch with him. We need to ensure, um, both men and women, but specifically to the men here, because it seems to be a problem, both in the society at large and in Jamaican society, so man no cry, man no, no um, express them feelings, etc. We need to be willing to be vulnerable. It don't have to be with everybody, because please note, he took James, John and Peter aside and reveal that to them. So it don't have to be everybody. It don't have to be everybody that you call your friend. But you need to have some people in your corner that you can break down. If crying is necessary, if weeping, if, if you need to be vulnerable, you need to have those who can support you in those circumstances. And one of the reasons the church has been established by Jesus is to create this kind of a support where we have, um, we have individuals that we can talk to. Um, let me see. I've seen some things in the chat. Let me make sure that I'm not missing anything. All right, so David said, also shows that we should do when people fail us, go back to them again. All right, good point, David. In addition to Brother G, in seeking help, be careful of the friends you look to for help. May just end up being discouraged. Um, solid point. Maybe that's why Jesus only took three. Um, probably presume that they were more inclined to understand his circumstances. So the Bible says, could it be at this point in Gethsemane that Jesus did not claim his equality to God? Well, I know that there's a passage where Jesus said he did not, he did not deem it to be, well, not Jesus, but it was said of Jesus that he did not deem it robbery to be considered equal with God, but he subjected himself to the will of God. So this is a reflection of him, because I think in his life on earth, Jesus submitted himself to God. He did not seek glory equate, um, equal to or above that of God. And here is a particular circumstance where he literally says, your will over mine. Um, seeing Brother Grenner said, should we be specific with um, or about our request? Um, now this, in this particular passage, I can't say that definitively because Jesus did not tell from the verse his disciples the specifics as to why, what he was sorrowful about. He made that request to God. So I don't know if I can definitively say from this particular passage that we need to make the request known to the individuals. What I would say is that do not hide the request because of pride. Jesus knew that the only person that this conversation would be relevant to is God. It don't make no sense because even in the scope of it, it never even really made sense to bring the request to God. It was more of a need to vent and the only person who will understand is God. So if I have a request and the reason I don't want to tell David or the reason I don't want to tell Kirk or the reason I don't want to tell Sister Fayon is because of my pride. They could very well help me through what it is I'm going through. And them not knowing is of no benefit to me in a spiritual sense. But I'm not telling them because one, I'm probably afraid say it's going to reach around to somebody else. Two, I don't want them to know that this is something that I'm struggling with. I want them to have this idea that Stephen don't do this or Stephen don't struggle with this. And that is why I'm not telling them that we're not, we're not doing any stuff. We're not doing ourselves any justice. We're not accessing the avenues that have been created for us through, through the church. This family, one of the reasons why we are the family of God is because we have the opportunity to bear one another's burdens. How can you bear my burden if you don't know what the burden is? So in some cases, um, Brother Grenell, I 
I believe that we don't do ourselves justice when we ask for prayer, when we ask for support, and we ask very generically. Because in a lot of those circumstances, generic support will not help with our specific problems. Whether we need to do so in a public prayer, I won't say that. So I'm not going to tell you that you have to, to make what it is, the specification of your prayer when you're making a prayer request. But I believe that if you're seeking support from members within the church and you recognize that the thing that you are struggling with requires the support of the people through them knowing what it is that you're struggling with, we need to work on putting our pride aside. Even if, like Jesus, it is just with a small or a select set of individuals. And if we don't have anybody like that, I suggest that we start, we start working on our relationships within the church and also we start working on our boldness. Sometimes we allow fear to cripple us and we miss out on the things that can help us to grow. I think I answered all the questions. I hope I answered all the questions. I'm seeing Brother Grenell's hand. I don't know if it's still up or you re-raised it, but you can go ahead, Brother Grenell. Brother Sorry, Grenell? Stephen, I thought so I've lowered, lowered it. Oh, okay, okay. All right, no problem. All right, um, we have about we have eight minutes. So let's see if we can get in one more passage. All right, I don't think this should be repeated. So let's see what's here. <laughs> Go ahead, Fayan. Budja Bantan. Budja Bantan. Hold, hold on, hold on. You need to be identified, Tazin. So you need to make you can't answer unless you're identified. That is correct, Fayan. Um, Paula, I see your hand up. You want to tell me the song? Oh, you need to hear more. Paula, where you going? Some more. Some more. Some more. I, saw, I saw the church building hand go up. Is that you, you don't need any more to answer or it's accident? All right. I was, I was here, Stephen. You're giving an answer, Brother Grenell? Yes. I'm church building. Not, it's not an easy road. That is not right. So let me lower the hands and give any more. <laughs> Go ahead, Marlon. I want to be loved or be loved. Marlon, always have two potential answers. All right, I'll, you're close enough with this one. With one of you. Even. 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 I, I did raise my hand. I said, no, want to play some. Yes, I'm going to play some more. You have a re that is why I'm going to lower the hands before I'm going to replay them. You have a re raise your hand. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can just raise your hand and then get clearance. Okay. All right. Um, so, so Fayan, you'll read first if we have. Okay, Fayan and then Marlon. So, Fayan, you are white. You are reading white. Sorry. And Marlon, you are reading yellow. <laughs> Let me just say that I would much prefer to read with Paula, but I'll go ahead. Oh First, God. he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and the sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first, establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. All right, thank you, Fayan. Thank you, Mylan. Fayan, I'm going to ask you not to drape up the rest of my participants, but you prefer to read it, Paula. No, I'm only no. on Marlon's case tonight. Okay, okay. All right, I'm I in the way. Oh, well, Marlon doesn't understand why. All right, so um, in this particular passage. Um, Jesus is being quoted here and he's establishing that things according to the law. So the sacrificing and offerings, the burnt offerings and sin offerings that are being established here are in reference 
to the ones that were in accordance to the law. And those offerings only covered sin temporarily. Hence why they had to consistently be repeated. Whenever the people committed sin, they would have sin offerings and burnt offerings. And the sin that they committed would be covered by these offerings. And they would have to keep offering those things. And then when Jesus says, here I am, I have come to do your will. He was coming to put aside, to be the sacrifice that would make these other sacrifices moot, no longer necessary. And it says that that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So once again, Jesus accepting that the will that God had was for him to sacrifice himself. All right, four minutes remaining, so we can have one last song. Let me just tell you now, Samuel and Esther are tied on eight points. So this particular song is, will either be the tiebreaker or will continue to tie. We shall see how things go. This shall be the last one. Go ahead, Marlon. I would like to give the name of the artist. Go ahead, sir. The name is Shakira. Shakira is correct. Would you like the name of the song? Pardon? Never okay, mind, Marlon. never mind. <laughs> you can you are automatically. That's why I'm on his case tonight. That's exactly why I'm on his case. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me, let me the Just in case anybody else can That's give the name. Go ahead, Tenant Tribe. Um, then you say it. Yes, it's your turn. Um, I know this. I know the name of the song. All right, go ahead, Elia. It's Waka Waka. Waka Waka is correct. Right. <laughs> so well done, Elia. Well done, Marlon. And we do end our activities on a tie. Um. Let, let us get the last. Oh, wow, it's a lot of verses. All right, so what we're going to do, we, since we are at 7.43, we will start Sunday's class with this particular verse. Since it's going to take a bit to read all of that. Um, thank you again for your participation. Um, Sister Faye, and I hope that you'll get off Marlon's case for the rest of the evening. And we look forward to continuing our class on Sunday. Um, I'll now hand over to the closing prayer. Thank you. Um, it's Marlon here. Um, yeah. It, okay. I'll be the one closing um, this evening. Um, are there any any prayer requests? Can we just type them in the chat if there are any? And um. Yeah, also, I don't know why, why Fayan and my case this evening at all. I remember when she was doing so well with her puzzle scrambled word thing. I wasn't on her case. Boy, bad mind, you see. I know, right, Marlon? I tell you. Um, well, if there are no requests, let us... Brother Bro Marlon. Yeah? I'm just asking you to pray for a, a special project. I'm trying to acquire... An equipment called a backhoe or some training purpose. Can you pray that the Lord's will be done, please? Okay, brother. Yes, and all right. All right, let us go to God in prayer. <laughs> Eternal and righteous God, we agree and approach your throne of grace, being thankful, Heavenly Father, for all that you continue to. Um, do and give um, to us. Heavenly Father, we're truly grateful for your many blessings that you um, you give that you demonstrate towards us, not because we're worthy, um, oh God, but because of the mercy, because of the love that you have for us. Lord, we truly want to give you thanks for your son, Christ Jesus, who came and died on Calvary's cross for our sins. Father, as we uh, go throughout this Bible session, we this uh, Bible study session, 
we again want to give you thanks for Stephen and for the um, marvelous job that he's doing. We want to ask you, God, to continue to bless him, that you continue to um, just be with him as he continues to do um, your work and your will. Heavenly Father, we pray at this time for Brother Grinnell, who brings before you his request to acquire a backhoe. We ask, Lord, that you will um, be favorable with this request, that you will uh, allow things to fall into place, allow um, things to work out in such a way that you'll be able to acquire this piece of equipment uh, for his business. Heavenly Father, we also pray with Tizane, who is asking you to um, be with his family. He pray especially for his sickness. Father, you know what um, ailment he may be going through at this time. We ask, oh God, that you will reach out and restore him to his good health. Heavenly Father, we remember at this point in time, um, all the members of the church, um, the Donaldson family, um, Brother Jermaine and others who are um, ill, we ask, Lord, that you will reach out and that you will touch each person in their area of need, that you will restore health, that you will restore faith, that you, oh God, um, will grant each person um, what it is that they are in need of. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will continue to bless us as members of your body, that as we continue to learn from your word, as we continue to build up um, our knowledge um, in, in, in the things that you would have us know, that, oh Father, we will become better Christians each day, that, oh Father, we will become better stewards in your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we again want to um, bless the church and bless the leadership of the church. We ask you, God, that you will continue to um, just be with us as we go from day to day and help us to continue to be the light of the world that others may see um, our good works through you and glorify you who are in heaven. Father, bless us once more, we ask. Forgive us where we have sinned. In Christ Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. With that said, I, I am not aware. I think tomorrow will be um sister crystal's birthday that's what i can remember if they if there are any others um someone can can remind me or type it in the chat and um trying to remember any of the other um sessions i know we have the nav life series that should be coming up on the on the sixth i believe is if is the next session um the fourth it's the fourth. Oh, well, I was way off. All right. So that's the fourth. And um, what else am I missing? On, on Saturday, we continue with our grief therapy, group therapy uh, for persons who have lost loved ones in recent times. Oh, yes. Um, um, so that will, uh, I think it's coming up. All right, I see. It. Um, and there's a Bible forum that is being put on by the Buff Bay Church of Christ. And I believe oh, tonight, and oh, I guess tonight is their final night. And then on the 28th, they will have um, um, the, the, the panel discussion, if I am not mistaken. All right, and our Bible study continues. Um, Sunday morning worship service, navigating life series, December fourth, which is the next uh, at this Zoom link, and I believe that is it for our notices. Again, it was my um, pleasure being in the Bible class this evening. Again, I want to say thanks to Stephen for um, you know the, the wonderful way in which the lesson is presented, and we truly want to say you know we definitely are learning and we're having fun while we're doing so. And um, again, just wanna. Um, Pray a blessed rest of week, and um, hopefully we'll see each other again on Sunday. All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you, bro. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye, Fion. Good night, Fion. Bye, bye. Oh, I should have prayed for her. My bad. I'll, pray. I'll still pray for you, Fion. Would you have prayed for free and mal and would that still there? <laughs> <laughs> good one, Stephen. Good one. Good one. I actually do. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night, sister Pit. Good, good night. I wish your blessings would come too, sir. Thanks very much, my dear sister. Good night, everyone. Good night, lady and family. Mm.
Good night, Sister Match. Good night, Brother Grinnell. Oh, you can speak up now. That's good to know. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. You're special. Thanks, Sister Madge. You want me to sing for you? Tomorrow. Sister Madge, good night. Good night, Sister Madge. You're using the mic. Yes. <laughs> Sister Debbie. Hi, Sister Debbie. <laughs> you fix it right to hear you. You fix it, Sister Debbie. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Mm. 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 See you, boy. <laughs> <laughs>